RLCS is back with Major 2, and the Middle East, South America, and North America all played in this last weekend in their first qualifier, and there was a lot of nice plays. In fact, the top three plays came from each region respectively, so we are going to take a look at each one of them and talk a little bit about some news in all those regions and the major spot outlook after the first week, because they all have something interesting to cover. Now, right now, we are on Kalir's POV watching him play against Twisted Minds in Game 7, which you might be asking a lot of questions about. But before we get to that, we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and we're within about 15,000. The end is in sight. If you haven't subscribed yet and you do enjoy the videos, I would appreciate it a bunch. But we're actually going to teleport back to Yen, playing in the Swiss against Complexity. So this is Furia against Complexity, a matchup that everyone was really interested in because of the guy who just challenged Yen, Diaz. Complexity dropped Dorito and added Diaz. And I think for people who have been watching ones on my channel or any channel, they probably know that Diaz has been a very promising prospect. And the question was, when is he going to get his chance in threes? He was on a team that wasn't really competing, you know, for that final spot or, or showing that they'd be ready to play internationally. So instead, it's going to be Raze Bull and CRR that will pull him up and give him his test. Now, how has the test been going so far? Not great. It doesn't seem like it has really changed anything based on when they had Dorito as Diaz tries a sidewall double. A little foreshadowing for what's to come. But right now, Furia still owns them. Furia still owns Sam. They played in an off-season tournament, I think, as well, where Furia won. This is the 2-0 round of the Swiss. Furia ends up winning 3-0. And then what's even the bigger worry for complexity is that in their semifinal against Team Secret, which is KV1, Brad, Mata, those guys, they were not able to take them down and make the grand final. And getting into the grand final is everything here in South America because there's only two spots. Furia, of course, won like they always do. But Diaz, the experiment is currently in trouble. And Diaz is actually going to be the one who launches this ball into Yan for the sidewall double and the fourth securing goal for this sweep. But I wanted to show a couple different perspectives here as this was a very nice shot. Diaz had a decent idea. Diaz is thinking, I'm going to get this out to CRR. So he tries to boom a high pass to him. Yan able to intercept it as Diaz rotates back. He's maybe expecting a double, but I think he just thinks he's going to get back to it. But in the meantime, if you take a look at Ray's Bull's perspective, this is going to be the more interesting perspective because it seems like he jumps off into no man's land. But as soon as you check out his POV, if Yan doesn't hit this, if he actually ends up faking it, Lost is currently in the perfect position to slot it. And you'll see players do this all the time. You know, go and fake doubles, make it look like they're going to try and shoot it themselves, leave it, and then a booming shot from the player waiting underneath. So Ray's Bull has decided that it's worth trying to cut that off, that that's the most likely option. Just turns out that Yan actually doubles it himself. And I think Ray's Bull was probably hoping for Diaz to make it back. I think Diaz was hoping for Diaz to make it back. But the reality is... He didn't, and maybe that is a little bit of a sign of how they've played so far with Diaz. I'm hoping that with more time with him, they can turn it around. Right now, it's going to be a battle against probably Crew and Team Secret to see who takes that second spot. But it might unfortunately be a theme of this major is teams making changes to try and get better and maybe not getting better. But for now, we are going to jump over to a team that is doing better, which is LJ with SSG. We hop on to LJ POV as he plays against OG in the quarterfinals. Now, Space Station is no stranger to making it to the quarterfinals, but what they are a stranger to is playing anybody other than Gen G. In the qualifiers for Major 1, they played Gen G every single time, a team that is a clear number two, maybe number one, after what's happened this last weekend. So it's tough to get that matchup. The way single elimination works and with the four spots, you really have to just win your qualifiers and you have to get good matchups in your qualifiers. And... Everyone was saying Space Station might be the third best team, but they keep getting the toughest possible matchup. So now is their time. Here is a team they're playing against that did make the major, one of the top four teams from the previous split. And that's who's standing between them and being in the top four spot in NA. So it is their opportunity to prove that they are built different. And actually, in the first game, they lost. They lost an OT. So right now, I think, you know, what they're trying to resist, and I'm sure they do a good job of it, but I bet you there were viewers out there thinking, wait a second, are they it? And hopefully LJ just answered it. <laughs> and hopefully LJ just answered it right here. Are they really the number three team? Well, LJ, the playmaker of the century, finds a way to make this shot and shows why they could be such a force to be reckoned with. I think we have to watch it again in slow-mo as LJ 
has Calm back. Chicago. Oh, wait. What am I talking about, Calm? He has JNaps, who's actually just blending into the background. JNaps pre jumps. He uses the flip to pop it over the top of JNaps, get the first beat. And then Calm is going to be coming off the back wall. A little additional tap to get over the top of him. Now, is the ball going to find its way in? Of course, it is at the tiniest angle. Even if there was another defender, they were not going to be able to stop them. LJ just breaking everybody down. We'll get and watch it from the defender's perspective to see just how tough it was to deal with. I mean, JNAP sees it coming. He does his best to try and pre jump here. He's like, okay, LJ to the sidewall. We cannot let him have that for free. And you can't blame him. He, he did try and stop that out. Let's see how much calm was affected by Chicago because Chicago did turn in field here to try and bump him. But I think, yeah, I don't think it really mattered. I think calm was going to challenge that way no matter what. He was headed to the back wall to try and intercept LJ. But LJ, he's a one man army. He is a playmaker uh, in every right, but usually he doesn't even need to make the play for someone else. Oftentimes, he can finish it himself. But a maybe more intense play. Maybe not as sick as that one, but a very important one happened. And that is the final one we're going to cover, which is back to Falcons versus Twisted Minds. Killiers POV in the grand final of the open qualifier for the Middle East. And you might be wondering, wait a second, where is Rule 1? Because wasn't every single grand final the Falcons versus Rule 1 last time? And Rule 1, I think, attempted to upgrade by adding Venom in place of Ahmad. But it looks like Ahmad was the stronger player after all, or at least he has joined a stronger team. All signs point to that as Twisted Minds were able to win 3-0 in the Swiss and then make it to the grand final. Meanwhile, Nupo and his Rule 1 squad lost in the quarterfinals for the first time this season. And so it's another situation that we kind of talked about before with maybe complexity in Diaz. Although I do think that complexity with Diaz is an investment that will eventually pay off, even if it doesn't pay off immediately. It looks like rule one with Venom isn't looking great. Hopefully it's the same case. Hopefully it's the same case and they just need to work some stuff out with Venom. And before you know it, they'll be back to that second place squad. But I feel like Twisted Minds is the heavy, heavy favorite now to be the one coming out of Mina. And if they're able to win this qualifier, there'll be no question, but even just getting second. Now, I don't know if you guys know the results or not, but you probably know the fact that we're watching Killers' POV that Twisted Minds actually did not pull off the win, but they brought the champs all the way to game seven, something that absolutely no one else was able to do. And Killers made it so that with four seconds left to go, his team got the only goal of the game. We've seen in and out of the net saves but have you seen an in and out of the net bump? You see SMW and Ahmad both up to try and make a play. But Killeers in and out of the net slams SMW perfectly. Ahmad, who is probably pulling off the ball anyways because he saw a teammate, is now unable to save TRK's follow through. And that does end up being the only goal of the game. And a tournament winning play by Killeers. And that's the thing about the Falcons is oftentimes, even when they were all the way back to you know their original... Sandrock Gaming slash Falcon squad. It always seemed like they might lose, but they just never do. And this is maybe as close as it's been in a while. And it wasn't Rule 1 who did it to them. It was Twisted Minds. I mean, I think a lot of people talked about SMW and Mawson maybe being those players that they needed to pair with Nupo, assuming they wanted to become the second best team. And instead, it was Ahmad who's now paired with those two. And, and maybe they've created a, a stronger squad for international play. I don't know. But I think Twisted Minds have to be the favorite. Of course, I'd love to pretend like Team Rock, the team that I've been following, the youngsters who you haven't seen in my previous videos, a 14-year-old squad that also got to the semifinals, but unfortunately got kind of destroyed by this Twisted Minds team. Um, you know, I'd love to say that they're next up, but it doesn't seem like really any team after the first qualifier can mess with either Falcons or Twisted Minds. Will there be a battle now for qualifiers or will it just be Falcons continuing to roll through? I think we'll see Falcons win all three. You know, I think we'll get a, a six out of six for Falcons, but I do think Twisted Minds are that next up team and Real One going to have to figure it out quick if they want to make it to majors. Otherwise, we're going to have to get used to these squads being the one representing Mina.